Dr. Mo, how often should I be doing my testosterone injections? Well, I would say how often makes you feel best and we keep the side effects to none or a minimal. So with that information, this is a very individualized question, but I'd say there's four major things that I take into consideration when I work with my patients. First thing would be milligram dosage, and then the ester, the patient's sex hormone binding globulin, and then the patient's individual ability to detox. And a lot of times this is trial and error. We can kind of figure things out in the beginning, but I'll kind of break this down. So first thing with milligram dosage, most guys really don't need more than 120 to 140 mg a week. In fact, if I put in a prescription for over 200 mg of testosterone, the pharmacy is going to call me and be like, why are you doing such a high dose? Right. And then as a doctor, I have to watch my my behind for malpractice, because anytime you move outside of the standard of care and something goes wrong, then you are liable for malpractice. So most of the guys that I always work with, 120 to 140 usually gets guys to the levels where they're feeling great. Again, we're going for symptom resolution, but I'd say most guys when they're you know above a total of seven to 900, you're getting their free testosterone over 15 milligrams per deciliter, they're feeling pretty good. So usually, again, I'm looking at that 120 to 140 migs a week. Um, now we need to think about, well, the ester, right? So what are some of the popular testosterone injections? We have sipinate, enanthate, uh, propanate, and I like using sipinate. It has a seven to 10 day half-life. The other ones, uh, propanate, I believe is like four and a half. Uh, enanthate, I've seen four, as low as four, as high as seven-ish. I think I've seen some places say the 10 mark, but I stick with the sipinate. And why is that? Because if we do 100 mg of testosterone sipinate today and has a seven day half life, a week later you're sitting at 50 and then you add out another 100, now we're at 150. So you can see there's a stair stepping. And really our goal is to get guys into a level where there's not much fluctuation. You know, the old school way of, when I first learned about testosterone sipinate, it was really recommended to do it once a week. And before that, uh, and even the standard of care now still might be the old school way of like once every two, I think there's a loading dose, but they go as low as like once a month. And so think about that. If you have a half-life of seven to 10 days, you're going up to a thousand and then you're going down to 250 and then a thousand, then a 250. Where really my goal with my patients is to get them in a, in a, in a flux and, be, and really cruise between that 750 to a total of a thousand. Again, free tea, but I'm going to, I speak in total just because more people understand that easier. Uh, but that does lead into our next point when we want to talk about sex hormone binding globulin. Again, in my experience working with my guys, when people have a higher sex hormone binding globulin, the body has an ability to hold on to more testosterone when it comes in. And because of that, it seems like there's a less fluctuation in their levels. So if they have a lower sex hormone binding globulin, their levels tend to go up and down because they're not, they're, their body isn't able to kind of bank it or hold on to it as much. And again, we're measuring labs as we go through with this. We're measuring, you know, total testosterone with your free, uh, watching your CBC, CMP, and, and other lab markers. So then we get to the point of detoxification. Now, again, this is a very individualized part of uh, every individual. And some people, you know, especially in the naturopathic field, we, we take a, a good hard look at this. Other fields may not put as much scientific uh, backing or thinking in, in this area. But for instance, myself, I have something called Gilbert syndrome. This impairs my ability, a uh, phase two detox reaction called glucuronidation, which makes it uh, harder for me to get rid of estrogens. And for instance, with women who are on birth control, there are plenty of studies showing that most drugs that they end up taking increases their half-life. It increases how long it takes them to detoxify, which makes sense because they have more to detoxify. There's more sex hormones there. So every guy is going to be different, but those are kind of the things that I look at when we're trying to decide on a frequency for men and their testosterone injections. I would say at the end of the day, most guys are feeling pretty good. We're doing 70 migs twice a week, 60 migs, you know, three times a week, but again, very individualized. So again, those four things, I'd say dose wise, you got, you got to look at that. And then you take into consideration the other three things, what their sex hormone binding globulin is, their ability to detox, and then um, also what kind of ester that they are using. And again, a little light on, add on to that is some guys feel better with different esters. That's all part of the game and that's all part of keeping this individualized. So I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment below if you have any experience with any of these things. And until next time, God bless and stay vigilant.